Hi right, guys, final part. I've got some nasty sort of file marks which I need to take out which unfortunately I put in when I was removing the scale from the heat treating. Um, I went a bit mad trying to be quick. So I'm going to start again from not quite scratch but I'm going to start with some 320 wet and dry and just plenty of elbow grease. Um, I did try and get some discs for my DA sander to try and make things a bit quicker but I couldn't get any fine enough. I need to go to an automotive place really. Well I've got some fine ones but I haven't had time. So it's down to good old fashioned elbow grease with the wet and dry. Do change the wet and dry frequently. It's, it's pretty cheap stuff so it's worth changing and you can see there it's working. The uh, nice black slurry is appearing. So it's starting to work, but there's no point uh, sort of making it, trying to make a piece of paper last forever. It's, it's cheap as chips. You might as well just keep changing it. Um, so I'm going to keep at it and come back once I've done a bit more. Right now I've done 320 and 400. And you can definitely see the difference. It's it's starting to shine a bit more, and a lot of the marks are going. Still a few in there, so we're going to go on to the 800 now, and then the 1200. So this is now the 800. Plenty more rubbing. It's my own fault really, I shouldn't have uh, gone so aggressive trying to take the scale off after the heat treat. So that's something to be learnt. Um, still, it's not unrepairable. Right, now that's after, this is after the a quick go with the 1200. So I've done the 8 and some of the 12 and you can see it's not mirror, but it's certainly much, much better, and that's literally just with paper. It's taken me about an hour, I suppose. Keep turning it over. So now what I'm going to do is, I think that's good enough to go on to the polishing wheel. So we'll go over there, see what we can do. I hope you can see this alright, because I've had to focus the camera right from the other side of the workshop through the fly press. I'm going to put some polish on. I'm using a white one here which I think is for stainless steel which works quite well on this hard steel. I'm going with the grain the way that I did the sanding. It would be quite easy to go the other way, hold each end and go the other way but I just want to go with the the marks that I've already put in. I think it will take them out better. Now it's starting to get warm and if you get to the point where you can't hold it in your hand, you want to cool it down. Because heat at this stage is definitely not desirable. You don't want too much heat in it. Do the fire work. Tidy that up. If you can see that, that's brought that up nice. So it's just bit of patience and you can see it's starting to come up. I don't want a mirror finish but it's it's getting there, it's it's coming up to how I want it. Okay so I've had a little go on there, still got a bit of polish on there but you can see well my ugly face and the camera so you can see how shiny that's come up. As I say, it's not mirror. I don't really aim for mirror, but uh, I think that's almost good enough for me. It'll need a bit of a touch up once I've got the handle on. But for now, that's good enough. Now I'm going to clean up the tang. Just going to take the, give it a wash basically, wash the whole lot, get the muck out from the teeth so that the epoxy has got something to grip to.
All right, I've given it a wash, and I've just slid a bit of old um, bicycle inner tube over the blade. Now I'm going to wrap it up with tape just to protect it and stop me stabbing myself, which I've already done once. So we'll give it a go with the epoxy. All right, I've just got this bit of old brass as a pallet and a bit of old hacksaw blade which I've ground the teeth off so it's all nice and flat. This is supposed to be a pretty rapid epoxy, but it doesn't say how rapid. So I don't want to hang about, but I don't want to be too quick. And unfortunately, it's, it's a bit stringy, but it's not particularly runny. Um, so I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get down in this, this hole here. Luckily, it's a reasonable size hole, so I should be able to get it in fairly easily. As you can see, it's, it takes its time to come off. I need to get it right down as far as I can. I actually hope I've got enough here because I've I've sort of run out. This is the last of it. I only have a little sort of handy tube. Come on, it's just not that. It might get a bit runnier if it was warmer. It's zero here today so it's pretty chilly um, I don't know if warming it up might have made it a bit runnier anyway we're getting it in there and so I want to let it run right to the bottom if I can and then have the tang push it back up so that it coats all the surfaces I think that's just about all I've got. I'll just have to hope it's enough. So I'm going to put my fingers over the pinholes. I don't want it squirting out. And then just gently slide the tang in. And that's why I wanted a bit of room so that the epoxy, that's gone nice and tight now, so that the epoxy will push out around it all. Because if you've got it too tight, you'll get like a hydraulic effect and you won't get it in. And that's just about perfect. There's a little bit of epoxy squirted out all the way evenly around the top there. Now I've lost the pin. Where's the pin? Pin, pin, pin. What the hell have I done with that? Come on, pin. Oh, there it is. There it is. This is uh, a brass art welding rod. Because I couldn't find anything else. I haven't got any small round brass so I'm hoping this will do it might actually be a bit, sort of bit more bronzy it's quite a dark colour um, as an arc welding rod I'm just going to wipe off this little bit of excess that's squeezed out around the top luckily this epoxy is dries clear um, but I want to get as much excess off as I can to start with so it just makes the clean up once it's dry, that much easier. Now I'm going to set it up in this clamp, which I've attached some lumps of hardwood to each jaw. I'm just going to squeeze it up. Hopefully that won't do any damage. That's fairly straight, I think, and it's pushed up nice and tight. I think that's going to be okay. I want to make sure it's fairly tight all the way around that, that join at the finger guard. I don't know, it's, it seems to be pushing down a little bit because the, uh, the clamp's holding on the crown at a bit of an odd angle. So I think I shall just push this chisel in there and then give it another tweak and that's it, that'll stop that going down that'll be just my luck, I'll walk away and leave it overnight and come back tomorrow and it'll be bent double where it's come away so right, I should have cut that welding rod off I think but I think I can do that afterwards and if this will focus you can see 
that that's actually quite nice and tight and that's uh, going to set up nicely I think once it's done I shall cut that welding rod off clean the ends over see that's nice and protected there against the wood you yeah, cut that off clean the ends over give it a nice polish up a final go over so I won't be here tomorrow so this is going to be set up setting up for a good couple of days now probably it's Monday now I won't be back in till Wednesday so that should be good and solid we can unveil it polish it up and present the final result okay so it's two days later so this has been sitting for almost 48 hours and it's nicely set so we're going to take this chisel out that did its job see if we can get it out of here without stuck into the wood and that's nice and firm so I'm going to cut these off uh, each side then grind them down and peel them over on the anvil and you can see there's very little excess to clean off here um, just a bit of a tidy up on the polisher and we should just be as good as gold right I've had a bit of a clear up I'm just going to whip these off with the Dremel. I tried taking them off with a pair of pliers, but this stuff's pretty hard. I don't know what it is. It's uh, it's a brass arc welding rod, but I'm not sure what composition it is. But as I say, it's it's pretty tough stuff. I think I'll have to give it a go one of these days and see if I can arc some brass up. See what it actually does. Right, so we've got them off. Obviously they're still a bit long. But I'm going to sand them down a bit. And I've actually put some countersinks in the, the horn. You can just see them slightly there. Um, which I shall peen it over into. Making a nice flush, fairly firm rivet with any luck. Now we just take the top off. just got about just under an eighth of an inch I suppose maybe an eighth sticking out either side we go over to the anvil and see if we can rivet it over I've just put this steel ball in the pritchel hole um, that was lying about from another job and I'm just going to use that as a bit like a, a snap head because um, if I had it on the anvil you see I'd damage the finger guard and probably the horn as well so I'm just going to use this just to keep it off the off the anvil and we're going to use the the ball pane end to start with just to push the material outwards pushing it down into the countersink do the other side I'm doing sort of a bit at a time each side I don't want to loosen it. It's nicely firm with the epoxy. So I'm being careful that I keep it firmly down on that ball. It's pretty hard stuff, whatever it is. It looks a bit coppery. It's almost as if it's got a bit of copper in it and well, I don't know. Maybe, well, I don't know what it is, but it's it's going over nicely. You see, well, you can't really see because it's gone dark where I've been hammering it, but it's it's almost flush. That side needs a bit more. Right, 
actually I might get away with if I go right on that corner of the anvil there that's better that's just going to finish it off nicely you see now that's gone down completely yeah that's gone down a tree I'm just going to do the other side again if I careful I can just get it on that corner that's a lovely job that's gone down nice and flush now you can't see them but I shall polish them up they are really nice and flush alright so I guess we'll whip this cover off and give it a polish up Right, well I've come outside, I've done a bit of polishing, cleaning up, and I am really pleased with this. Really pleased. But what I would ask, if any of you out there know, what I can put on the blade to protect it. Just to stop any fingerprints causing it to go rusty. Because these oily fingerprints, you know, they go rusty in no time. I don't really want to put something on that's going to do away with the shine but if I have to then I will you know some sort of an oil or a wax if anyone's got any ideas perhaps they'd drop me a line in the comments box and let me know but I'm really chuffed with that really really chuffed and I think it feels lovely and I think I might even get quite addicted to doing these quite like to do another one but anyway thanks for watching it's been fun and in its own environment out in the woods and I think I'm going to call this the legend for the only reason that the rasp I used to make it was actually called a hella legend so I think that sounds quite appropriate for that Thanks for watching.